Hey, what's up? Cody Woods here, and I'm at the park this afternoon. I was going to do some flying. Um, I recently built this uh, fixed wing. It's a Volantix Ranger 1600 millimeter glider, INAV powered and all that nonsense. And I haven't put together a build video about that just yet. Since I'm getting into fixed wings and whatnot, I've also been dabbling in long range systems and I've been running R9 for a while for the control link. Um, I did a little antenna, com uh, antenna comparison video with that system. I'll leave another card. Um, wasn't real thrilled with how that turned out. I didn't have a great place to do it. I only had like 800 feet of run out. There were power lines and stuff. And I I got some data, but I don't feel like it was, I don't feel like it was great. So I, I just, I felt a little bit disappointed about how that turned out. I published it anyway. And I think other people are probably a little bit disappointed about that also. But anyway, I got a better, I got a better location. And so now I'm going to do a uh, comparison on video antennas actually, because I have, in the past struggled just a little bit maintaining a comfortable video link um, I don't like running on the ragged edge if I don't have to so but like I said I do have GPS sensors on everything I have return to home on everything so it, I mean it's not really a big it's not really a big deal but I upgraded my video anyway so I was running a true D system with a uh, with just this antenna combination here the omnidirectional axis antenna and the 8db immersion RC patch so you can see that I have upgraded to rapid fire. I no longer have the True D in the goggles, but I do have my old antenna combination on there. But I wanted to upgrade, right? So I also bought this LZR Double 13 DB patch kit by Immersion RC, and I want to com I want to compare these. So I have a better location. I think I got much longer run out over this field, and I want to take this quadcopter and dial it down to 25 milliwatts of transmit power, take out over this field, and see how far we go before the video gets unusable and then flip return to home. And then once we see how far that went, we can bolt on the double patch array kit by, by Immersion RC and do the same thing and compare the length or the distance achieved by each system. So let's do that. And hopefully we won't be disappointed this time. <laughs> Let me get things ready. All right guys, got my quadcopter set up. Uh, not running a GoPro. Yeah, I don't see any use in it, so I'm not gonna do it, but I won't have CG quite quite right. It's gonna be a little bit wonky, but should fly all right. Good enough for us. All right. Let me double check my output power. Get in the OSD menu here. Oh, not OSD. Um, here we are, VTX. So you can see that our power level is indeed 25. And the only other thing I'll do is test return to home once I take off. So you can see on my OSD, um, top right I got current, My the receiver link bars are kind of on top of some of the other data. Um, top left is altitude and one of those dashes above those, uh, those receiver bars is actually uh, distance from home, I believe it's the one next to the, the current. So. Keep an eye on that. Whoa, all right. Yeah, so we can see that we just have direction to home, distance from home, and upper left is actually altitude. So let me double check return to home works. And it looks like it does. We ascend it to about 200 feet or so, and it is coming back. Must have some gyro drift or something. Seemed to be coming back sideways, but it doesn't bother me a bit. It works, and that's what matters. Seemed to be fighting the wind just a hair. It's like I said, it's windy. We're a thousand feet out, 1100, 1200, 13, man, 14, 15, 16, geez. Okay, this is outperforming my expectation. Now we're starting to dip. 
I just wanted to take a moment to interrupt the video because something interesting is about to happen. We're about to turn to come home, right? So this is the quadcopter that I'm using and this is the way I've got the antenna mounted on the back. This is a VAS mini ion antenna and there should be a null in this antenna in the radiation pattern at the top and at the stem of the antenna. So as we come back, we might experience part of that null. And uh, in addition to that, the body of the quadcopter will be in the Fresnel zone of the video transmission. So this should be the poorest quality video that we experienced throughout the entire flight. So let's see what happens. Okay, ha. Huh. Trying to search for the signal. I'm not sure why it turned black and white on me. Okay, so we went out like 2,100 feet. That is crazy. Perfect landing. I'm not sure what to do. That's 2,100 feet out and it's still going strong on 25 milliwatts with the setup. So this is outperforming my expectation. Uh, what is that? We're approaching half a mile. 2,500 would be, uh, 2,600, 2,640 would be half a mile. Maybe I didn't need to upgrade my video. <laughs> All right, let me get the array kit, I guess. Uh, this is going to be another disappointing video, I think, but we'll see what the um, receive link bars on the top of the OSD um, in the DVR look like at the same distance, I guess. That's the only thing I know to do. All right, we're back with the... Uh, the LZR 13 dB dual patch array from Immersion RC, and we're gonna see how that compares to the uh, the other setup with the 8 dB patch and the Ami. I don't know if this thing has very much of on it, but at this point, I don't have battery. So I'm gonna die and then I'm not gonna have battery with all the But I'm not gonna stop it. All right, so what did we take away? First of all, the receive signal strength indicator bars at the top of the on-screen display, not sure what they mean. Um, there's no indicator uh, of what the units are, how the calculation's made, how it's displayed. In order to know any of that, we'd have to dig into the source code. I don't believe we have access to that. That's probably farther than I wanna go into this anyway. So well, I'm not sure what to make of that data. Whenever we look between the two sets of antennas, the 13 dB patch array kit versus the 8 dB patch, Mm, those little indicator bars don't really show me a whole lot. Uh, they look roughly the same. I think the average is probably a little bit better with the 13 dB patch. But I guess a quantitative information gathering, I don't think that's the intended purpose of those, those bars. I think those are probably strictly up there so you can steer your receive antenna beams. And that's it. We're probably using those outside of the intended use. So I'm not sure if those results surprise us because of that. <sighs> Take that for what it is. I think in order to really see the 13 dB patch kit shine, we would have to take both sets out until video was just unusable, exactly as I thought I was going to do the test in the beginning before I realized that we were going to outrun the length of that field also. Um, see, so yeah, I know who owns that field and I don't know who owns beyond it, so I wasn't wanting to go into trespass mode if things went south and I had to go find my quad. Um, if I can find a, another location, somebody willing to let me do this, uh, I will, I'll do it, I'll do the test again and 
hopefully we can we can explore the the end of the limit of those those uh, 13 dB patch antennas a little bit further. But outside of that, it's clear to say they perform better. Clearly, I mean, whenever we turn to come back, the 8 dB patch with the omnidirectional antenna cut out, turned black and white, did all sorts of crazy stuff. Whenever we turned to come back with the 13 dB patch kit, the video stayed clean. It might have got a little bit fuzzy, uh, some maybe some little artifacts here and there, but still a very very strong signal and clearly clearly more gain, clearly better. But none of us are surprised at that. So the only thing I can say about the double patch kit is it is pretty heavy on your face. So those are, you know, extended out from the goggles a bit. It'll put pressure. If you have a big nose like me, you'll get pressure on the on the bridge of your nose and your cheekbones and stuff. But a uh, small price to pay for that kind of performance. I hope this helps somebody, and thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll see what we can do with it in the future.